I just love the book uh, This Life by Martin Hegglund. And yes, it just so happens that me and him are from the same part of the same cold Scandinavian country. What I don't love about his book, though, is that he doesn't get that there's loads of theology that is fully compatible with his vision. To him, if, you're, if you don't believe in eternity, you're not religious, which means that I'm not religious. I'm just an ordained minister and teacher and scholar of theology with a secular faith. And that's actually fine by me uh, personally, but I don't think it's fine that it adds to the polarizations of this world. And I don't think it's fine if we lose people identifying as religious who could actually share his vision. His vision for a society based on a love for this life rather than a love for a transcendent idea of a better, happier, non-ending, prosperous life after I'm done spending every hour of this life feeding an economic machine with a non-ending hunger for more. So, uh, three examples of theologians that fit well into Hegland's visionary society. Let me briefly introduce to you the Holy Trinity of Karen Bray, Clayton Crockett and Daniel Barber. Karen Bray says that in a neoliberal society, you're expected to be productive, efficient, flexible and happy. And if you are, you'll be saved and redeemed. If not, well, too bad. What Bray suggests, though, is that we attend to what the current economic societal structure regards as unredeemed and stay with the moody and material present as a basis for a political theology that refuses to go along with the demands of neoliberalism's soteriology of jolly flexibility. In other words, theological resistance by attending to this life just as it is, just as it feels. Clayton Crockett also refuses to go along with the temptations of the transcendent reality because, he says, when our reality on earth is placed within the spiritual play of Christianity, our planet world inevitably becomes secondary to the spiritual world. Theological models of transcendence, in whatever form, devalues the world through the assumption that the world is not all there is. Why should a Christian finally care about the earth if the earth is not ultimate? Pretty much exactly Hegelund's argument, but to Crockett it is the first step towards a kind of this world theology. Finally, to Daniel Barber, this life theology is not new to Christianity. For Barber, Hegland's surrender to this life reality fit perfectly with Meister Eckhart's teaching. Even the idea of God's existence, Barber says, is produced by the subject needing an other to stand forth as, as well existent. But when we are actually present in reality, we don't need those transcendent others in order, order for us to exist. And this is precisely Eckhart's apophatic point. Barber says, Eckhart urges us to leave behind our outsider perspective on the world as something that we do not yet access, but might under ex ex exceptional circumstances like a happy, flexible, pious or whatever. Instead, we should come to see that there is nothing to get to. We are in the real. We don't need access to it. We've only lost sight of what we already have, namely full access to this life. So, three examples, and there are plenty more. This life theology is really nothing new.